Elizabeth Record ran a progressive school for girls on South Main Street from 1829 to 1842. Most schools taught girls music, needlepoint, and social graces. Mrs. Record taught math, science, and philosophy of the mind, which is psychology. Punishments weren't handed down by teachers, but were discussed and decided upon by the student body. 391 and 395 South Main Street were part of Mrs. Record's school. In the 1860s, Sarah Bradford ran Mrs. Bradford's school for young ladies and little girls from her home at 629 South Main Street. In 1869, Sarah wrote the book, Scenes in the Life of Harriet Tubman, based on interviews with Harriet. The proceeds went to Harriet, who was in danger of losing her home in Auburn. Rhoda Palmer signed the 1848 Declaration of Sentiments at the Seneca Falls Convention for Women's Rights. She was the only signer who lived to legally vote in a 1918 New York State election. Rhoda died in 1919 at the age of 103. Although Geneva was conservative, there was a women's suffrage movement supported by both women and men. The Political Equality Club was formed in 1897. Strong local figures were Elizabeth Smith Miller on the right and her daughter Anne. Elizabeth was raised in a progressive family. Her cousin was Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Several statewide conventions were held in Geneva. Elizabeth Miller used her connections to bring national and international suffered speakers to Geneva. Susan B. Anthony was a frequent house guest. In 1911, a fountain for people and horses was dedicated to Elizabeth Smith Miller on East Castle Street. After women won the right to vote in New York State in 1917, the Political Equality Club disbanded. In January 1918, the former leaders of the Political Equality Club invited 60 women and 40 women's organizations to form a new club. The Geneva Women's Club was created, quote, to advance the interests and efficiency of women and to work for the education and welfare of the community, end quote. In 1919, the New York State Suffrage Party changed their name to the League of Women Voters. Ontario County formed a chapter that year, followed by Geneva in 1926. In 1932, the statewide convention of League of Women Voters was held at White Springs Farm, home of Agnes Slauson Lewis. It was the first state convention held outside of New York City. Since 1960, the Geneva League of Women Voters has given the Agnes Slauson Lewis Award to a woman for outstanding contributions and participation in community affairs. In September, the League partners with the NAACP to give away backpacks and school supplies to local school children. William Smith was a wealthy nurseryman who wanted to do something for the improvement of women. In 1906, he agreed to start his college on the Hobart College campus, sharing professors and students. The first class enrolled in 1908. This is William Smith with the first graduating class. He passed away shortly before commencement in 1912. Although competition was considered unladylike in the early 1900s, William Smith women have always been athletic. In 1916, Geneva women organized a war relief group that became part of the Red Cross. They ran a canteen at the Lehigh Valley Railroad Depot that served World War I troop trains, day or night. During World War II, women trained to operate all kinds of industrial machinery. Many continued to work in local factories in the 1950s, like these women at Geneva Forge. Women have been the backbone of fruit and vegetable processing in Geneva. In the 1950s, women sorted cherries at Macintosh Freezing Company. At the Maxwell Bowden and Rice Nursery, women prepared rose bushes for shipping. In the 1950s, many Geneva teenagers picked sour cherries at White Springs Farm and were paid by the pail. Food service workers are often overlooked by historians, but loved by customers. Jenny Tony, here in 1951, was a local baker for decades at Quality Restaurant, the Pumpernickel, and others. Rosa Blue and her husband moved to Geneva in 1949. She was the first female president of the Geneva NAACP and served as executive secretary of the Geneva Human Rights Commission for more than 30 years. In 1974, she helped organize the first march in Geneva dedicated to the memory of Martin Luther King, Jr. Mary Flanagan Gowerke grew up in Geneva. 
She began drawing cartoons in the 1950s after she married. She sold one-panel jokes to magazines ranging from Playboy to the conservative magazine National Review. She had a syndicated panel called the Alumnae from 1969 to 1975, which ran in the Geneva Times. From 1898 to 1934, the Geneva City Hospital School of Professional Nurses was an apprenticeship-based program. Students graduated with the equivalent of a registered nurse degree. Marion Whalen, in the center, was a visiting nurse in Geneva for nine years before starting the School of Practical Nursing in 1956. Today, the school is affiliated with Finger Lakes Community College, and students earn 20 college credits, which can set them on the path to becoming registered nurses. In 1939, Hildegard Hirsch moved to Geneva, where she passed the New York State medical exams. She practiced general family medicine for many years and was the first female president of the medical staff at the hospital. There have been many businesswomen in Geneva over the years. Two current women-owned businesses are Earthly Possessions and Perfectly Unique Gifts and Home on Seneca Street. Geneva native Gloria Peak has been a boxing coach for over 40 years, working with youth in New York and Virginia. In 2012, she was the first female boxing coach in the Olympics. Women scientists at Cornell Agritech have moved from support positions to leading researchers. Susan Brown is a horticulture professor and apple breeder. Helen Maney, left, served on city council and was the first woman elected mayor in the city of Geneva from 1974 to 1979. Joanne Weiser was mayor from 1996 to 2000. In 2018, Sage Gerling, left, was sworn in as city manager by city clerk Doris Myers.